Well, high performance is the name of the game, and we get there by starting with education, by starting with teachers delivering this example to students. Today, we travel all the way to Iowa Lakes Community College. My name is Mark Willie with Offsite Dirt, and I'm joined with Audrey. Oh, thank you, Mark. That was such a great introduction. And we love high performance and building science. And for many, we are starting now in the college level, which I think is phenomenal. It's being expanded and growing across the country. Today, we have Corey Menning, and he is going to give us a little background about before he started at Iowa Lakes Community College. Welcome, Corey. Hey, thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. So give us a little background about how this whole construction thing started, Corey. Absolutely, yes. So um, the construction program has been around at Iowa Lakes Community College um, almost 50 years now. It's pretty exciting. So uh, my actually, my mom and dad both went to Iowa Lakes. They met at Iowa Lakes. Uh, my dad was in the carpentry program, now the construction program. Um, she was in the nursing program. So Iowa Lakes holds a special place in my heart and my family's heart as well, too. But um, ever since I, can, since I can remember, I've always wanted to be in and around building. Um, like I said, my dad grew up around it. He was a, a, a carpenter and he owned his own business as well, too. So I grew up around it and loved it. So in fact, when I was uh, for my fifth birthday, I got my first like workbench with actual tools, not the toys and stuff you see in the stores these days. So it's kind of fun, but uh, taking things apart and things like that. But um, all throughout high school, I worked with my dad's construction business um, in the summers and actually probably before that as well, too. <laughs> but um, I just I've got a huge passion for construction. I always have and I always will. But um, so I. My plan was to actually go to Iowa Lakes or go to a uh, community college of some sort to gain more experience in the construction industry and then probably eventually go back and work with my dad and then eventually take over the business was kind of the goal. Well, during my first year at Iowa Lakes, my uh, instructor, Gary Schmidt, um, developed a second year part of the program that kind of focused more on the business side of things as well as high, high energy efficiency construction too. And uh, yeah, I thought, you know, I'm here now now's the time to take it and get an actual degree versus just a diploma as well too, um, give myself more options. But during my second year at Iowa Lakes here, I uh, was actually asked by Gary to be a lab assistant. Basically, when I didn't have my second year courses, I could be on the building site with the first year guys building the houses and help with you know tool questions, look for safety things, things like that. And I really found a passion that it was really kind of neat. And I, and I thought the more I thought about it, the more I thought I could actually do more for the construction industry, staying in education versus just, you know, going and, and taking over my dad's business and, and going that route. So um, after graduating, I actually went back and, and worked with my dad's company for a little bit. But I actually got a phone call probably a couple of years after I graduated from my uh, Gary Schmidt, that instructor that I had in college. And uh, he said, hey, you know, we actually have a full-time lab assistant position we're going to open for the construction program. I want to be, you know if you're interested in applying. So I applied for it and I was one of, I don't know, a handful of applicants. I ended up getting it and uh, I've been here ever since. So this July will be 20 years that I've been with Iowa Lakes. So in the construction program, pretty exciting. <laughs> 20 years is so exciting. And um, so... Gary Schmidt is his name. Yep. So we have we have Gary to thank, and of course we have uh, your mother and father to thank. Yep. Uh, that that story can't be replicated. If anyone tries to steal it, we'll know you took it from <laughs> Corey. Um, so you know, uh, navigating navigating uh, the future path for people in our community is is often set up like this right there was an advancement in the program and you heard about it and you said i'm gonna try this um now you have students right now that are in your program and they're trying things so you guys have embarked on a duplex right you guys Absolutely. are building a duplex so talk about 
uh, the students and and tell me about the process of navigating a duplex with college students in Iowa. Yeah, it's pretty crazy how we've um, how this has all came about. Actually, a few years ago, we actually partnered with the city. They actually approached us to help um, build some some projects for the city, and, and we've kind of stuck with them. It's worked out well, so they financed the project, but. So we have people from the housing task force that come in each year, probably about this time of year, typically um, in our spring semester when I have my um, CAD class with my second year students. That's where we do the design work and show them how to do CAD drafting and things like that. So, um, but yeah, they come in with some of their members from the housing task force and talk about what they want next year's project to look like, what kind of features they want it to have, square footage approximate, things like that to, to kind of go for. And then it's up to each student to come up with a plan or a, you know, a floor plan and, and a design that fit all those criteria in it. So they each come up with a plan throughout the semester after they've kind of learned the program, the, 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 or the software we're using. And then towards the end of the semester, the, the same officials come back into my class. Each student actually presents their plan to the, uh, the members that are present there for the housing task force. And then they kind of, um, deliberate and decide what they want to pick. And then that's what we build for the following year. And usually we try to do that in, in such a time frame where we can actually use that plan then with our estimation class to actually go over the uh, estimating the material quantities and things like that for the project as well too. So it works out really well. And then next year's, the incoming freshmen will actually end up building that, that project next year. So, um, so that was how that duplex came about this year. And actually right now we've got one of the sides nearing completion inside all the doors are hung all the casings installed all the trims done um before too long we'll be getting ready to do a blower door test on that to see how that turned out and then uh get some siding on it and then it's pretty well good to go so that's yeah, pretty exciting my gosh i love that you have the systematic plan and you touch all areas of building which makes it exciting for the students to realize what area do they love most? So Corey, Absolutely. I think it's genius the way that you've designed this. So I'm very passionate as you're aware of offsite solutions. And we have many images that um, show us about ICFs, which are insulated concrete forms. Can you give us a little bit more understanding why you like using them? where they have been coming um, into your projects, and then if there's any other offsite solutions that you've been using in your construction program. Absolutely. Well, like I said, so I'll be at Iowa Lakes 20 years coming up this July, and of the projects we've built that have basements, which the majority of them do, we've built more with ICFs than without, which I'm pretty happy about. So, because I firmly believe that they're a good way to go in terms of basement construction because they're so energy efficient. I like that uh, you know, you've got, you're totally isolating that concrete from any outside temperature influences. It's very nice. So it's a nice warm. In fact, I built my own house um, back in 2007, did that with ICFs and I'm so glad I did because it's so warm and comfortable in the basement. It feels like you're on a main level. You don't, you can't tell the difference temperature wise, which is awesome. So, um, and actually we've also built um, using SIPS panels as well too. So um, there's actually a company, Energy Panel Structures, uh, out in Grettinger, about 15 minutes from here, and they've supplied those. We've built a couple houses with those as well, too. So, and then at the end of the project, I forgot to mention before, too, it's really neat to do blower door testing on those projects as well, too, to see how how well they perform versus standard construction techniques and and where the details matter, too. So, so, so you know, this is very forward thinking because the marketplace doesn't always use ICF and doesn't always use structurally insulated panels. So when the students come out of this program, they have uh, a varied amount of experience that, that, that maybe their future employer doesn't have. And then, uh, you know, when you, when you mention, I call it the red door of truth, right? The blower door, the, <laughs> Audrey always reminds me, she's like, Mark, if we don't, if we can't measure it, how do we know? And so when you're with the students, does the blower door come from your program or is there someone in the community that 
is a third party raider that come in. How does that work, Corey? Well, I appreciate the question. That's a great one. Actually, no, we've got our own blower door uh, test. We've also got, um, I believe it's four or five thermal imaging cameras and some other various energy diagnostic testing equipment, uh, duct blaster tests, things like that as well, too. So, yeah, we do that as well. We, we perform all the tests in-house um, to show the students how to set it up, how to work, how to take the calculations, all that good stuff. So it's it's I think it's beneficial for them to see how that works and how it can show problem areas as well, too. So. In 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 the coming time period, right? You guys begin the project. Um, you, the project is begin in the fall semester. Or, yep, that's correct. Mm -hmm. And it's finished usually by the by the summertime for the yeah, market. We usually try to get it done by the end of the spring semester, which is right around the second or third week of May, typically. So. Okay, that is that is impressive because it's it's real construction, it's real weather, yep. right? <laughs> it's real breaks that students have. So so you're juggling student life, uh, mother nature, and everything oh, yeah. else. Um, in the in the summertime, is there anything that happens in your community to? to help uh, gain awareness for the future employers and the students alike? Yeah, absolutely. So there's a summer internship or on the job training, if you will, part of the program too, where they have to work so many hours in the construction industry. Now um, that can be industry wide. So we've had some guys that have done, you know, electrical work or plumbing, but the vast majority of my students typically look for that residential or maybe like commercial job set where they can, you know, get a good uh, build their skills better and then and, and kind of hone their abilities. So um, and that's a good way to build relationships too with the industry people as well too, which I think is fantastic. I mean, in this industry, in my opinion, anyway, relationships are huge. I mean, you've got to be able to know people and, 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 and have a good way to, to communicate with others as well too. So helps build the students soft skills as well too, you know, communicating and, and whether it's written or orally or verbally, it just, it's a good thing to be able to do that too. So. Totally agreed. So you have some photos that you shared with us where there are four gentlemen that are in front of a framing, um, like a little small framing house. It looks like okay. it could be, do you, do you know, do you remember that photo? Do you remember what I'm talking about? I think I know what you're talking about. Can you yeah. Tell yeah. Me, can you tell me that story? Because they are young gentlemen. Obviously, they look like they are in college. And behind them is like a framed, small, tiny house. That's what it looks like to me. Is, is that at a conference? Is that at the school? Like, what was going on with that actual story? Absolutely. Yeah. So that's actually a group of individuals that were on um, competing in Skills USA. So I don't know if you're familiar with that or not, but it's a really awesome organization. Every state has their own uh, state level. And then there's also obviously the national uh, conference as well, too. So um, we do like to have students that want to compete in the Skills USA, either in individual carpentry or in your case, you're talking about the, the team of four. That's uh, called uh, Teamworks. It's a team of four that generally build, like I said, almost like a tiny home. It chooses it's somewhere around an eight by eight structure that has plumbing, electrical, framing, both wood and steel, as well as roof framing. And there's, there's also some masonry in that as well, too, at the national level, too. So you have to win the state level in order to get to national level. And, and uh, it's pretty exciting. Um, I probably uh, shoot myself for saying this maybe, but uh, knock on wood, every time we've actually competed at state, we've won and we went to the national level and, and done really well there too. And we've placed in the top 10 uh, every year that I can remember anyway too at the, the national level. So that's pretty exciting. I'm pretty happy with that. But I think part of that comes and just why, from the, And why do you think that would be? Why do you think that would be, Corey? How come? I like, just think that part that of it's, I think it's all this, you know, the the... <laughs> the various uh, things we expose them to and actually the real world experience they get while here, hopefully. I'm, I'm hoping that's it anyway, but, um, and also I think they do a good job of, I think, I think I'd like to think that maybe my passion hopefully helps inspire them to, to get excited about it. And I generally see that in most of my students, they get pretty, pretty excited about it. It's usually not too long after we start the program where 
guys are coming in with, you know, whether it's a new stiletto hammer or a, you know, fancy new, you know, diamondback or occidental tool belt, or they, some of them just jump in head first and they go all in. It's pretty exciting. So it's pretty fun to see. It, it, it is Corey. And it's not, it's, it's not, it's not about talking about the passion, right? It's, it's passing it on and showing that passion. The fact that there's even, you know, the incredible folks at Skills USA, the fact that there's even programs where you get to compete, where you get to learn, where you get to self challenge and get the support to do that. You know, the the odds of getting on a pitcher's mound and the odds of being a receiver um, it, it are are pretty slim. However, the fact that you get to create structure, compete with others that create structure, and then have this as a life, um, what a joy for you! It happened at age five, for me maybe a little bit before them we have similar uh similar lives there uh i i think it's amazing that you decided to become a teacher that you were picked uh for this program and uh it's amazing to see this 20 years what will happen with all these students lives that that you touch and uh virtual high five to you, Corey, and to all the folks like you that do this day in, day out. Thank you so much. That means a lot. I appreciate it. And just one last note, Corey, can you tell us just a little bit more about your construction technology program? Absolutely. So um, actually, my program is one of over 40 CTE programs that Iowa Lakes offers, which is pretty exciting. There's so if construction is for you, there's a lot of other cool programs that are. Uh, but no, it, so there's an optional two-year part of the program. The first year is where we do the, you know, the hands-on part of it. That's where you get your diploma. Um, and most of the students seem to be interested in doing that second year part of the program as well, too, to get the actual AAS degree. Um, that's got a little more focus on, uh, again, some high, high energy efficiency construction techniques, as well as more management type stuff. Um, advanced uh, estimating. That's where we do the CAD design as well, too, like I mentioned earlier. Um, again, a lot more well-rounded, hopefully that way, too, a uh, student would come out of the second year part of the program versus just the hands-on part, too. So, but again, it's not for everybody, so it's nice to have different options. And then we do actually have some good articulation with some of the universities as well, too, for if they wanted to get like a four-year construction management degree as well, too. So multiple different kind of uh, ending points or stopping points, if you will. So, yeah. I'll jump in there, uh, Corey, if I could, uh, if I could be 19, (laughs) I would like to be uh, sitting in your courses. I would love to be uh, at the job sites. The fact that there's 40 in uh, the construction tech world is re- remarkable. I, I, the continuation in the university is is amazing, and I, I, I've never even heard of a university that has the program that you have. Um, it, it's impressionable. Um, so high performance is here because of bringing this to students. Corey and Iowa Lakes Community College is bridging the difference that our communities need. Join us every month, every week, and as often as you can on Offsite Dirt for more inspirational leaders like Corey and Iowa Lakes.